is it today? Monday to everybody. Happy Monday. Um, we're just logging on. Thank you for those of you who are joining with us today. We were a little delayed getting started today, but I think we're going to be okay. I am just checking to make sure that I get everybody's questions and answers and all of that good stuff on my phone so I can answer your questions because we have a really, really exciting show today. Okay, guys, you know, this is a question that comes up all the time. It's men's hair replacement. And there's a lot of you out there who are like, you know, into men's hair replacement. Some of you are already customers of men's hair replacement. Some of you are looking to get into men's hair replacement. What is it all about? What does it look like? And for those of you who are interested, today is your day because we have a great show. We have two lovely people joining us today. Um, I want to introduce, first of all, that lovely gal sitting over there in her little workshop over there. That is Miss Brandy Reyes. And Brandy Reyes comes to us all the way from Phoenix, Arizona. And she is the owner and operator of Elements of Hair. Hello, Miss Brandy. <laughs> it's so good to have you. As always, I always look forward to a show when you're on and when you share your expert artistic viewpoint with us and your incredible capability of doing men's hair replacement. I am in awe of you. Um, and I'm sure everyone who's going to be watching today is going to be in awe of you as well, if they aren't already. So thank you. Thank you for being with us. Thank and you for always, coming. Oh, oh, I mean, you're making time for us. I can't believe it. I'm honored. <laughs> this is always fun. This isn't work. This is fun. Oh, well, good, good. It's fun for me too, actually. It's fun for me too. And I always learn something. And so for those of you who are watching today, maybe you're tuning in uh, from a, a, just a curious perspective because maybe you've thought about hair replacement and you want to know more, or maybe you're already doing hair replacement. Uh, we have so much information for all of you. So I'm going to try to keep it neutral so that we can answer questions for people who are interested in it for themselves and for those who are you know, already working with hair replacement. And so also with us today is Gina Kreidem. Gina, hello, hello, hello. She hello. joins us from Florida. California. <laughs> oh, you're in California right now. Oh my gosh. Gina, you are just, you know, you're just back and forth, I guess. You're, Gina works for us and Gina is the um, director of sales and business development for us at American Hairlines. So she's a hair you wear employer, employee like myself. And so uh, we are so honored to have you and for you to take some of your time, Gina, to, uh, to join us today because Gina is here because she's here to tell us about a very special offer that we are doing for those of you who are participating today. So Gina, why don't you take it away and tell us what you got for us today? Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm actually really pleased and super duper excited to uh, let everyone know that um, our prize for today for the winner is 20% off your next American Hairlines order. So I'm really excited because I think that this is a really good opportunity to take advantage of the William you're going to see right now. So with that said, um, I will let the show continue. If you guys have any questions, uh, drop them in the chat. That's where me and Jenna will be answering any other questions that you guys might have. So I'll see you on the chat. Enjoy the program, everyone. Thank you, Gina. Yeah, so it's nice of Gina to join us because if any of you have questions that pertain to American Airlines, Gina and Jenna will both be here to help fuel some of those questions and to get some responses to us in a little bit quicker method than if I had to look it up. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> so thank you all. All right. Without any further ado, first of all, let me welcome you all. Uh, also, if you are interested in looking up any information on the pieces that we have in the American Airlines collection, the William is not here right now. We're, we're adding it. But get to Flipsnack. Check this out. Go to Flipsnack backslash hairywear.com. And you will be able to find our actual American Airlines catalog here. And that will give you some information and, it'll, you know, give you some ideas about um, some of the, the pieces that we have and also what they look like when they've been applied and styled. So some information there for you all. All right, Miss Brandy, let's talk about William. We're going to be doing the William hairpiece today, which we are launching. And mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about the hairpiece, because I know you've been able to work with it a little bit now. So what's a little bit different about our William is William is an oversized top of the head. It's not a full cap but it's not a regular eight by 10 top of the head. Front to back is 10 inches, side to side is nine and seven eighths, where normally they are eight inches side to side. So it gives us a little bit more room in the temples right here for those guys who have lost a little bit more hair down in here. 
for years past, if we had anyone that was an over an eight by 10 size, we had to order a custom system. We had to wait the 12 to 16 weeks for it to come in. So the William opens up a pre-custom stock, you know, availability to people that need that larger size. Yeah, like myself, because I have a big head. <laughs> yeah, because you definitely have a lot of hair loss happening right down in through here, Frank. I know, it's a problem. What can I say? I'm lucky I still have it right now, but there's a lot of men who do suffer with hair loss, uh, whether it's genetic, whether it's alopecia, there's a lot of reasons. And this is a great system. It's a great way for you to get hair quickly because it's already, it's ready to go. And so yes. I think that's a wonderful thing um, because it, when you want, when you decide you want to get hair, you want it. And I don't think you want to wait for it. And so having a, a ton of pieces, you know, varied pieces in the arsenal is great as a tool. Wouldn't you agree, Brandy? I mean, even for you, it's a tool to have things to choose from. Well, what's so great about being able to get your hands on it right away is when sometimes when you have to order a custom, you have to try to predict, okay, when is the current custom system going to wear out? How long before do we need to order? If anything goes wrong and we wind up needing to order sooner, you know, we're we're waiting 16 weeks for something to come in. And this is awesome because we can keep that consistency. We can always keep that same look. We never have too much hair, too little hair. By being able to get it right away, um, it just offers us a little bit more consistency. We always know what we're getting. Yeah. So I'm so excited because you guys who are watching today, we're going to see an actual demonstration uh, where we actually apply this new William hairpiece to a live model, David, who is joining us. He's with Brandy today. And uh, I, thank, I thank him so much. I thank you, Brandy, for being able to provide everybody who's watching today with an actual live model because it's so much better than seeing it on a mannequin. You can actually see the subtle nuances of, of customizing. So David is a perfect candidate for the William because he needs that, that little bit of extra that comes right down in here. So we'll get to kind of see that on him today. We're gonna do a perimeter bond with our copolymer and silicone bonds is what we've kind of talked about and decided to do today for him. So right. we're gonna leave this top part open. Cool. So yeah, so we were talking about this earlier, and there's two ways, I guess, we can bond the William, and one is to do a complete bond or to do a perimeter bond. And Brandy, will you tell us the difference between the perimeter bond and then just bonding the entire piece? So perimeter bond, the system itself is only attached around the edge. The top part is left open. The William does have two mesh inserts in the top, which allows for a little bit more breathability. A regular full head bond, we would put the adhesive over the entire scalp and then everything would be bonded down. Gotcha. Perfect. So you guys, here's a perimeter bond today. I know we've, in the past we've done a full bond, but we're going to do perimeter today. So this is going to be really nice too, to give you a little bit of variety. So I guess I'm going to retrieve that picture of the William that we photographed on one of our models. In the meantime, Brandy, if you want to bring David in, bring him on in, girl. <laughs> I'm going to mask up and we will get him in here. Okay. 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 <laughs> so you guys, we did photograph this piece on a model. And so you can see on the, you know, left side of the screen, you can see what our model looked like without his hair. Um, and you can see the William attached. And also in this diagram, you can see what we're talking about. If you look in there, you see on the diagram of the actual photograph of the piece turned inside out, you see that ventilated area. So you have a little bit of the bonded side where you can bond, and then you have the open area. So this can be completely bonded, or we can just address the perimeter area with the bonding agent to attach the scalp. So um, if you want more information on this, again, you know, write to any of our reps and uh, you can get that information. But I just wanted to show you guys a picture of what this looks like uh, when it, the, the whole thing is complete. Hey, David. Hi there, how are you? Good, thank you for joining us today. We're really, really happy to have you here. It's, it's to great. Happy to be a part of it. Thank you, thank you. So, um, Brandy, I assume that do you have to like, did you already like base and clean David's head, his scalp, or is that, we have to do that yet. No, so I wanted to have him ready to go. So we've already cleaned him up. I've already trimmed down his little bit of excess here. 
So you can see right in through here, he's not real strong. So we bring that system all the way down in okay. through here. His yeah, hair, there you can see it totally. I see what you're talking about. Yeah, right down in through here. So we need that, that oversized coverage on him down to here. He's a perfect candidate for a perimeter bond because he does have still a lot of that stubble in through here, but it doesn't give him enough fullness, which right. is what bring the system down to here. Yeah, you know, interestingly enough, I've met uh, quite a few men who have at one point in their life earlier um, had done like a, like a scalp reduction so that they could do a hair transplant. And mm -hmm. in, in those times before the FUE procedure, um, they were left with some large scars in the back of their head. Then they decided they didn't get the hair that they wanted. They wanted to go to, to a hair replacement system. And something like this, I think would really help to conceal a scar if you have a scar low and lower in the back of your head, right? Yes, exactly. So for those guys that do have that scarring in the back and the, the eight by 10 sizing isn't enough to cover that scarring, the William does offer that for you. Fantastic. That is fantastic. So a lot of you guys tuning in, I uh, just wanted to say hi to Kimberly, wanted to say hi to Kathleen. Uh, who else? Jane is on. Hi, Jane. Miss Siamara is on. Hi, Stephen. Hi, Stephen. So thank you guys for joining us again today. Angie, thank you for joining us. Gail, thank you for joining us. Um, and Diane. Hi, Diane. So, all right, Brady, I'm going to let you take it away. <laughs> okay, so... William comes, and I just kind of want everybody to be able to see, this is how William comes out of the bag. You can see it's that 22 millimeter, or 28, I'm sorry, excuse me, 28 millimeter. So David here, we actually, we perm his system. So we put a little more curl into it because we cut it a little bit shorter and he likes to have just that little bit of a wave to it in the front. Right. So when we're looking at this today, you will see that it's quite a bit. I just want everyone to know this doesn't come quite this curly. We've actually permed this. So it's going to look a little scary when we first put it on. And we are going to cut it down and we're going to get him his perfect look. Okay. Okay. So since he has already cleaned up, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lay this down and I am going to mark him. And I usually use my comb, as we've seen in the past, to mark that front hairline once I lay it down, because I am going to use a copolymer in the front yes. and around the edges here. And then right around the edge, I'm going to add a little bit of silicone to it after I get the copolymer put on and that gets nice and dry. Okay. Hey, Brandy, you know, you always say that you mark, you know, you mark the scalp or where the, where the, the hairline is supposed to be with your comb. You're talking about, you leave like an impression on the actual skin that lasts long enough for you to see it. You're not actually marking. Exactly. So I use that comb to go through and put indentations into their skin. I find using a marker or a grease pencil, if you get any of the copolymer adhesive on top of it, you're going to compromise your bond trying to get those marks off the head. Makes they sense. will also leave marks on your system. So then you're going to have dark dots right in that front hairline that we're trying to, to melt okay. into their skin. Yeah, no bueno on that. No good. <laughs> so you guys, I'm so thrilled you're able to watch this. You know, one of the things that I think really separates Brandy is I don't even think of her even as just like a hairdresser. I think of her or a hair replacement specialist. She's an artist because she looks at the hair and she looks at the texture, perming it coloring the hair before you, you apply it. She has a great eye and a great finesse and an attention to detail that someone like myself really appreciates. And I think it's something that any of us who are in the, in the hair business, wig business, uh, tra you know, uh, any kind of business that involves hair, that attention to detail is what really separates us. And so getting an education like this and learning from someone like Brandy is a great opportunity. So I just, I wanna say that again, Brandy, thank you. So go on, I won't, I'll let you tell us what you're doing. <laughs> So right now, all I'm doing is I'm, I'm laying this down on his head. I'm double checking. I want to make sure that both of these little tabs, if I feel right now, I've got one that's right down here a little further than this one. So we're just going to adjust this a little bit until I've got these pretty even. And then I'm going to come back up here. I want to check this front. I want to make sure that this looks, and I use that mirror in front of me a lot of times. I can kind of pull this up. I can double check everything here. 
And this looks pretty good to me where I have him, but now I wanna go in the back and I wanna pull this back up and I wanna make sure that I'm coming down where I should and I'm getting the coverage that I wanna get here in the back. Gotcha. So we can see that's gonna come down where we want it to go. Right. Hey, Brandy, you know, um, Gail Sanderson asks, she says, what kind of perm did you use for? Do you use a perm for color treated hair or a particular brand? What do you use? So we use a perm for color treated hair. Um, when we do these and we use that perm for color treated hair, mm -hmm. we want to make sure that we're wrapping it in a rod size tighter than we actually want. Right. So if I want a white rod size, I'm going to wrap it in a gray. And the reason being is the color treated perms are a lot milder. They're not going to take that true to rod size. Gotcha. 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 So I am coming through here and I'm going to create a little bit of pain for this poor guy, but it's really going to be perfect. <laughs> I promise. He looks tough. He looks like he can handle it. <laughs> um, Denise would like to know, she says, as far as adhesives are going today to do this perimeter bond today, um, what type of adhesive are you going to be using, Miss Brandy? So I'm going to use Safe Grip. And I'm going to use a no tape silicone bond around the edge. Okay. So if there's a way, can we maybe get a little closer to see how you're marking with the, we had like an iPad. So you guys, we were trying to do like this total presentation where we could like hover over the top, but it's a little yeah. hard to do it with the, with our technology, <laughs> but we do have an iPad. Can, is there a way we can try and see if that works, Brandy? Yeah, let's see if we can get that over here so she can get in a little closer and really you can kind of look at those marks up close and see what I'm doing here. Can you guys see that okay? Well, there we go, yeah. Hey, that works. Look at us get we got, you know what, we got to do a cooking show and to just, you know, like how they do that, like they're hovering over the pots and pans with like the overhead cam. <laughs> oh, just turn the volume down, gals, that's all. Okay. Happens to me all the time. All right, so I've got some nice little marks here. I'm going to come right down here and I want to make sure that I'm marking him right here. Mm -hmm. You can kind of see. Yeah, that just kind of gives you your little bit of your indicator. It's interesting how it lasts long enough that you can get the bond on. It's amazing. So as long as I get the bond in that front, I always start with the bond in the front first. Randy, you know, um, I wanted to say Diana has a really interesting question, okay? She says, um, she, when it comes to shaving the scalp, you know, from a technological standpoint, cosmetologists aren't really supposed to shave the scalp. How, how do you, do you just, do you just shave it? Do you just, I mean, or how do you, how do you prepare the scalp? So we clean it up as best we can. I don't use like a straight razor or anything on his skin. All I use is my clippers. So like even this little bit right here, I'm not really worried about cutting this down. Sometimes leaving a little bit of hair underneath there, the hair will absorb oil. So it sometimes having that little bit of hair is actually going to help it bond a little bit better. You don't want to shave it all the way off. Okay, excellent. And see, I like you're just applying that. And, you know, for you, you, you all who are out there watching, um, just, you know, that, that bonding agent, you know, looks really light, but it does dry very clear. So uh, keep that in mind. Don't be worried about that. Hey, Deanna Zimmer from Chicago. Hello, hello. Good to see you on here, friend. Deanna and I worked together years ago at a hair salon together. So we want to apply this in nice, thin, even coats. And we want this front, by the time I get to the back back here, I want this front to be pretty much dry. And so, Brandy, you're applying that with a latex sponge, I'm assuming, correct? Yeah, just the regular makeup sponges that don't have vitamin E oil in them is what we want to use. Ah, 
Okay. And so with a perimeter bond, Brandy, um, I, is this, would this be suitable for someone who swims or someone who's very active? Judy was wondering about that and it's a good question. Yeah, so most people that do the perimeter bond, it's pretty much the same hold as your full head bond is gonna be. It's not gonna be a whole lot different. You do wanna tell your, your clients to wait 24 hours before they're washing their hair, working out, mowing the lawn, any of those things. Mm -hmm. We wanna we want to let it cure completely before we start sweating. And these take about 24 hours to cure. Gotcha. Makes perfect sense. Got to let that set up a little bit. Can't get too active too fast. <laughs> no, and it gives a lot of my guys, you know, they can go home and tell their wife, sorry, honey, I can't mow the lawn today. I had my hair done. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> that's great. It'll get you out of the honey-do list for a whole 24 hours. <laughs> you know, Brandy, a question that came up from Kimberly um, wanted to know when, when you do perm the hair to get the texture that you want to achieve, right, to match his own texture, do, mm -hmm. do you air neutralize with the perm or do you use a neutralizing solution on it? So you can do either or. When I'm using the really gentle perms for color-treated hair, Mm -hmm. I'm probably going to go ahead and neutralize it. Okay. If you're using a little bit of a harsher perm and you have the time to let it air neutralize, go ahead and let it sit in those rods for five, six, seven days. The yeah. trick to doing any perm on a system is you just don't want to get your perm rod line marks. Right. And what I mean by that is when you stack them perfectly in, it'll create little marks at the base of the system that'll almost make it look like it's balding in certain areas. Yes, yes. You get those perm rod line marks on regular hair when you perm anybody's hair, but they go away after a few days because the hair grows back out. Right. Well, this hair isn't gonna grow back out. So in order to avoid those, you wanna take your se sections similar to doing a foil and you wanna kind of weave those sections and put each small section in a rod. Yes. And prevent you from getting those hard lines in the system. Right. And you know what? I do that with the wigs too, because you have to be really careful because once you get that, once you've permanently put in that kink, it's really hard to work that out. And you don't want to be rubbing the knots and trying to loosen that up all over again. So, yeah. um, you know, one of the questions that comes up is, uh, and it's from Mary, and she says, what is the advantage of the full bond over the perimeter? And I, I think that's a good question. I, I would assume it depends on your, on the individual's level of activity, would you say, Brandy? It does. And it's also kind of an individual preference thing. I mean, I have some guys who really want to have that top part open for breathability. Mm -hmm. I have some people who are just, they don't feel secure unless the whole thing is suction cupped down to their head. Yeah. So that really does depend on client preference. And I'll let them try both and see what they feel more comfortable with. It doesn't right. necessarily have to be up to me. I kind of leave that up to the clients a little bit. Right. And I, and Kimberly was asking, you know, as far as what kind of shampoo and conditioners to use, I, I assume um, a, a salon quality shampoo, or do you have something that, I mean, obviously something that doesn't have a lot of oils in it and emollients, is that correct? Right. So my preference is to use, um, I love the Enjoy shampoo and conditioner. They have the sulfate free. Um, I love their mask. Mm -hmm. It is a little bit of a heavier type of conditioner, but I really like to keep the hair soft and moist and healthy looking. If it starts to look dried out and fried, it just doesn't stay looking good. It'll break off at the base. Right. So using a really good quality hydrating shampoo and conditioner is key. Okay. Now I am just putting a little bit of this on at the front of the system here. I'm not going to put it on all over, but okay. I am putting a very thin layer of adhesive on the front of this. If you can see that. I, I'm copying you. I'm copying you. I get, I get what you're saying. And then, you know, Deanna asks, and a lot of people ask this question, they all want to know how long does an application, a men's hair placement system last? How much time can you get out of it? And again, I know we've talked about that before. It depends on your activity level. Do you work out? Do you sweat a lot? Are you in a, a hot climate where you would perspire more than a colder climate? 
in general, Brandy, what can you say to how long it lasts before you have to reapply and then retrim the hair and all of that? So I normally will tell people two to four weeks. Three okay. weeks is a good average. Everybody's body chemistry is a little different. Everybody has, some people have more oils than others do. So normally what I like to do is if I do a brand new consultation, I'm doing a bond for the first time, I'm going to have them come back in two weeks. And we're gonna take a look and see what that bond looks like after two weeks. If it's still pretty solid, I know at that point, I probably could go four weeks. If it looks like it's just barely melting down, I know we could go another week. Yeah. So it really just kind of depends. And we just base it upon each client. Gotcha. It's kind of like I've seen I've seen people with like who get like acrylic nails done, you know, where like the better their nail, it's like, you know, two weeks and it's like halfway grown out. And then other people, it looks like it was just done, you know. <laughs> so. Exactly. Yeah. So that's pretty much the same premise. And and some people's nail beds are a little oilier than others. Right. Okay. So we are now going to apply this silicone bond right around here where he's got this hair. So now, that is what we're talking about, right, Brandy? When you're talking about the actual bonding agent. So that now gets, that's a little firmer hold, correct? Did he support? It, it is. So silicone bonds normally bond to that little bit of texture. They bond to that little bit of hair that's there. The reason I put the copolymer underneath it is because it gives it a little bit more texture, a little bit more to grab to. Right. And that makes sense because that is what, you know, Janet Thomas was asking, you know, does, will this bond really keep the hair piece on if it's not completely bonded all the way down onto the scalp? And I guess when we're working with this kind of bonding agent that you're using now, you, yes, it will. Yes. So this is one of my go-to favorite bonds. Normally I use this with all of my copolymers. Even if I'm doing a full head bond, you'll see me do about a one inch layer of this around the edge. And I'm just kind of taking my brush in there and I'm just really kind of wanting to aerate it and make sure that it gets nice and tacky and dry underneath there. Right. We and don't I see want to you're kind this. of stippling it. You're kind of stippling it on, I can see. Yeah, and if, if you get it on too thick, I see people take the tube and they go like this and, and they, oh, yeah. they tend to want to just do it like this. Well, what happens when you lay the system down is it's going to squish out the edges if you don't have it nice and smooth. Ah, makes perfect sense makes perfect sense hey steven to answer your question yes you you can cut this piece down uh it's a larger piece but it can't be cut down so so if you had somebody who just needed to use these areas right in through here we mm -hmm. could cut down the back a little bit smaller if we needed to and just keep you know these temple areas right in through here if right. if to utilize more of the hair that he had in the back there. So we are going to let that dry for just a minute. And we can kind of show the base of this, William, up close a little bit better. So you can really have an idea of what this looks like. Where are we at here? Okay. So do we want to switch the cameras over back to the other sure, one here? Sure, but we can switch back and forth, Miss Brandy. You are the leader of okay. this, this thing, so <laughs> we'll leave it up to you. I don't know how well I'm doing at it today, but I'm you're trying. Doing great. You're, do you're doing great. You're doing great. And, and I love that people are writing in questions because you guys ask us your questions and you'll be entered in to bring that 20% off that we're doing today. So thank you for the questions. Go, Brandy. Show us, girl. <laughs> so you can kind of see we've got the mesh insert here. And we have this one up here. I kind of like to think of this guy as being the big brother of our trend to light. Mm -hmm. So your, your makeup of this system is, is pretty similar. We've got the free edge in the front right here, the working edge that you can use to pin it. So when I'm working on it, when I'm perming it, when I'm coloring it, I always use that free edge. I don't want to put pins into this area right here yeah. before we get ready to put it on. We just trim that little bit of edge off of it. Yes. And you know, you guys, Brandy has, uh, has taught quite a few classes for us, would you say, Brandy? Um, oh, one or two over the years. Yeah, just one or two. 
And, um, you know, one of the things that we do uh, throughout the year on normal years when we're able to travel and we're able to be in group settings is we do classrooms and Brandy is one of our, our educators and, um, you know, you can come in and learn the system, but because of the situation and because of the lockdowns and the various things that we're all going through right now, we are offering education, virtual education online. So you can actually take a class now um, online and participate that way. So we've, we're adapting people, we're adapting, we're doing our best. <laughs> well, I'm just gonna kind of put those dots right back there in the front for me so that I've got a sure eye on what to follow. I've got Gabby turning the AC down a little bit. He's getting warm on me underneath this black hot cape. Yeah. And he's I know those capes get a, bit, get a bit uncomfortable, can't they? Yeah, and I've got this nice heavy black one on him, which wasn't very thoughtful of me today. <laughs> well, and you're in Arizona, so I mean. <laughs> I think it's only supposed to be like 80 today. Oh, really? How yeah. lovely. But then by Saturday, we get back to 100, so. Okay, <laughs> we are going to switch to this other camera here as soon as I can get her in here. We're going to lay this down. Okay. Hey, um, real quick, uh, Brandy. So Betty wanted to know, what was the name of the silicone bomb that you used? So I used um, no tape. Um, silicone bond. It's made by Vapon. There's one by Walker. Walker makes a great one as well. This is just happens to be the one that we have in the salon that we use gotcha. daily. And I believe you guys actually have that one now too. Yes. Okay. I think about that. Oh, there we go. Cool. Are we ready? So when I bring this in, I'm not trying to come up this way. I'm going to come straight in like this so that I can kind of lay that front down right there and you can see I kind of right you roll it right Brandy yes and we are going to lay this top part down right here first before I lay those sides down and right. the reason we do that with a three-quarter cap or um full head full cap system we don't want to lay those sides down until we have this back part Right. Pulled over the head because otherwise we wind up with a tiny little pucker right here and a tiny little pucker right here. By doing this, we can take this and shift any excess forward and have a complete flush fit. Right. So. And how much tension do you put, Brandy, when you're stretching that? Just a, a medium tension or? So I'm not putting hardly any pressure on it whatsoever. I'm not really doing any pulling. Mm -hmm. um, just trying to keep the wrinkles out of it. Too much tension when you're putting this on, you can actually cause hair loss. So we just want to keep the bubbles out. We want to keep it nice and flush. I got a tiny little edge that flipped over on me here, guys. We're going to get that out. Yeah, you always want to get that out as soon as possible. <laughs> yeah. Let me get a little alcohol on here and I'll show you my, my go-to. And Brady, this, I forgot to ask you earlier, this, this particular piece, you, did you color this at all or did you not have to color this? I did. So this was the same color as the one we have over there. And it was a number three uh -huh. and I darkened the edges. So you can see here that I've kind of darkened his edges and I've done a root on it. And then I've left that lighter color kind of through the ends right here. Right. See, and that's what I'm talking about, what I love about you when you're working, Brandy, and the way you think about things. Just adding a little depth at the root gives it some natural dimension. It's not like you did a jet black root. You just took it down a shade or two just to give it some yes. depth and dimension. And that's what makes things look even more believable and more real because hair does fade at the ends with the sunlight normally. So it's just that subtle hint that separates like, you know, the girls from the women or the men yeah. or the boys from the men. I don't know how we're gonna say it. So I like to do a lot of depth and dimension in the hair. I don't like to see things too solid. I think too solid to me will scream hair piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anything that's gonna add extra depth and dimension, there we go. We have a perfectly flush fit all the way around. 
Now he's a little scared right now because normally I cut this down a little before I put it on his head. We don't usually start out looking. <laughs> don't worry, David. She's going to take care of you. You know you're in good hands. <laughs> I had him a little worried. But normally, Brandy, you would recommend to trim the piece down a little bit so so that's more manageable to work with. Yes. Yeah, so I probably would have taken a little bit of this off, but I really wanted you guys to see what this looks like. Right. Like before we do anything to it as far as um, the length and everything. Yeah. So Gail um, Sanderson would like to know, Brandy, is there a particular color line that you prefer or is there, I would assume you like to work with semi-permanents for these, right? Yeah, let's switch back to the other camera there. Um, and we'll talk, I use Pravana. So Pravana is my go-to color line. Um, and the reason I use it, well, I know it very well. I know what uh, face colors there are. I always nice. color the hair while it's wet. I don't do it while it's dry. I always wash it first thing out of the bag. Mm -hmm. It always gets washed before we do any coloring or anything to it. Um, so I do use permanent colors. They are a little thicker. They're a little bit of heavier, so they're not going to drip down onto the base. I've got a little more control over them. Right, right, right. Because if you do something that's a cream consistency, you do have more control in general whenever you're doing hair color. So that's something to keep in mind, especially with something where you want to add a little dimension at the root or uh, add a little depth or even do some highlighting techniques. I always think that's it's a little <laughs> more stable to use a cream than it is like a, a gel or something. Yeah, so the gels I find they're just, you know, you might get a little too much on the brush, it might drip, it might fall onto the base. And if we color the base of the system, we know we're never going to get that out, right? Right, right. And so Susan uh, Mills wants to know, you're spraying, you're spraying it with water right now. It's just water you're using, just yes. to kind of, okay. Uh -huh. and, and then um, he would normally just reapply this hair piece in a couple of weeks then, right? You would, do, I mean, I know we sometimes say have two, and then one they could come in, it's a time saver, right? To have one that's already cleaned and ready to go. And then you can clean this one and use it the next time. But it, if he needed to, if he just had the one, it could be done in one day where this is yeah, taken. So most of our clients get a new one about every three to four months, just kind of depends. So we normally will just do one at a time. Oh, okay. Um, so the one we actually took off of him today is still really good, still looked really nice. He was one of our first people to get to play with the William and try the William. He was a little bit of our guinea pig because he's always good. used custom systems. Very good. And and I mean, what did you think of it? Did it work okay for you? It was it okay, David? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, uh, cool. Yeah, very happy with it. Very cool. So you can kind of see around his edges right here when we did his perm. Yeah. Because we straighten his hair. We use a straightener on his just to keep that nice and flat. Sure. We didn't perm this quite as tight as we permed this hair up here. So we just left a nice little wave in the base right here at the bottom. You now, see, Brandy, attention to detail. You're thinking about how it's going to blend. You're thinking about all that. I love it. Yeah. So, you know, with him, we obviously can't have too much curl. Also, when you're wrapping a perm on a system, we don't ever want to take that rod and we don't want to wrap it like you would on someone's head. You mm -hmm. always want to candlestick those rods on the side. Oh. Reason being, if we wrap this like regular and we go up and down, we're going to create a great big tunnel right here. And we're going to have a really hard time getting this to blend in with his hair. So we always want to do more of a candlestick on our sides. You hear that, folks? That is the voice of experience talking to you. That is the voice of I've made that mistake. <laughs> That's how we learn. Save you from making it. <laughs> exactly. That's how we learn. We I learn. always well, I learned the most from the biggest mistakes I've made. Yeah, you know what? That goes that goes <laughs> true for hair and for life, huh, Brandy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> So we're going to start a little longer on his sides here. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to start trimming this in. And again, you have all probably seen me use my texturizers to do mo most of my cuts. Yeah. I don't like to start out with a straight shear. Again, yeah. using your texturizer gives you more movement. 
versus using your straight shear is going to give you quite a bit of a blunt cut. Do you ever use like a feather razor, Brady? I mean, if you're, I mean, I use all kinds of tools when I'm working, but do you typically like just, is that a go-to ever feather razor or is that just a refining technique? So I don't use the feather razor a whole lot. I find that, um, so with today's blades, they don't stay sharp enough. And I have just one of the regular old feather razors. Yeah. I don't want to create a lot of frizz. If I took a feather razor to this curl right now, I would have a nightmare of frizz on the top. Okay. Whenever I was done. Um, so if you know what you're doing, if your razor is sharp enough, which Frank, I'm sure you do, I would say yes. <laughs> this is all before every person. I really do. Your, your texturizers are always a safe route. You're not going to um, get a lot of the splitting of the hairs. You're not going to create a lot more frizz with it. Right. And if you make one cut that's not quite the right cut you want to make, you can always go back in and adjust as you go down. Right. And it's interesting too. I always think because you have to see how the hair moves, right? Because all of these pieces, let's understand, just like our own hair, they're knotted and the hair moves in a certain direction. And there is a benefit to using a texturizing blade to remove the hair lengths because you can use a, a razor, a feather razor, you really have to use when the hair is really wet, I feel, to not get that frayed look. And exactly. with the texturizing blades, you can work with the hair a little dry so you can see where it naturally wants to go and you can make those adjustments. Well, as a hairdresser, we've all heard the joke over the years, what's the difference between a good haircut and a bad haircut a week? <laughs> yeah. Well, the reason why is because our hair doesn't grow in at even lengths. Every hair follicle is individual. They don't all grow in at the same length. So sometimes you get a haircut, you, the reason you like it better a week later is because that hair has grown back out and it's all grown back out into its own texture, some a little faster than others. Right, right. So right. this hair is obviously never going to grow back out. So we really want to cut it with those different lengths in there. We want to cut it with that different texture so it's got that movement to it. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And that's what it is really. It's about recreating nature and observing nature and then figuring out how to mimic that. Yes. So I just kind of want to show you, I'm starting him off a little bit longer and I will come back in through here and we'll taper that up just a little bit more. Right. But we use that to kind of create just a little bit more of a weight line down here around his ear so that it kind of creates that illusion that he's got just a little bit more hair in through there. Yes. And I see, you know what, Brady, I noticed like you really do work with it pretty much you don't ever really work with it soaking wet, you know. Um, so with the texturizer, the drier the hair is, the more hair you're going to take out, the wetter it is, you're going to take out a little bit less hair. Mm -hmm. So I like that kind of medium dampness to it. Of course, I don't want it soaked, but I like that little bit of a medium dampness to it at this point of my cut. As I get towards the end, you'll see me dry the hair a little bit around the edges and I kind of dry it and see where I have more weight in it. Right. And that's when I go through with it a little bit drier and that's when I kind of start taking out more of that weight. Yeah, so Denise uh, asks, hi Denise, I'm meaning to get to your question. She says, you know, what do you charge for your custom color application? Um, and I would assume it would be like just a, like a salon appointment, right? Because you're, you're coloring this the same way you would a person's own biological hair? Well, so if someone has bought hair from me and I have, they are buying the hair at the shop, I include that into the cost of the hair. Right, right. So right. we don't necessarily charge separately for that. Like I, I want the client to be happy with their purchase. So I'm just going to include, people start to feel like you're kind of nickel and diming them to death if you're doing well. Right. This is the coloring of the hair, this is the cost of the firming of the hair, so on and so forth. So we just kind of add that in. Wonderful, wonderful. Marianne uh, Spalding says she would love to get some education just on perming units and how, how you know, the techniques that you use for that. And I, I would agree, Mary, that's very good, useful information because, listen, we're in an age where there's so many different hair textures and you need to be prepared for all those different hair textures. The piece will lend itself to different textures as long as you know how to customize it, you know? And so 
Marion, if you want like up-to-date education information, contact us. Any of you who are interested in more education or learning more, uh, contact us at education at hairyware.com. That's usually where that information is available. And we'll let you know when, uh, when we have upcoming classes and, uh, and instructions. So one of the good things, if we can find anything good about COVID is our classes that we have been doing have been more of a one-on-one -on -one type of a class. Right. So we'll have, you know, maybe one salon at a time in the class and we can really, versus having, you know, people from all different salons when it's just one salon, we can really tailor and customize that training to specifically what people feel like they want to work on a little bit more. Oh, that's it's awesome. It's really awesome. great. It's it's more of kind of a one on one experience. Yeah, because you know what? How many times have I taken a class and I'm like, oh, I got to wait through all of this to get to the part that I really need to know and yeah. being able to customize the education for the individual. I mean, hello, that is that's big time good news because everyone's at different levels, right? When you start this out, some people have been doing it for a long time. Some people are just getting into it and need to know as much information as possible. So yeah, that's, I didn't know that Brandy, that's really great news. So when we start our classes, if there's something specific that they let us know that they really wanted to talk about or they really wanted to work on, I will make a point to make sure that we spend a little bit of extra time at that point during, during our training to make sure that we can address all of those questions. That is fantastic. And you know, Brandy, um, this this question came up twice, and, and Gail's asked it the second time. And I missed it the first time, but uh, they wanted to know: like, would you normally like wait a few minutes um, after you've applied the piece and adhered it before you would wet it and cut the unit, or do you just go right into it? I just go right into it. I don't really find that it's created any issue. I'm not soaking it down through these yeah. mesh or anything, and it was pretty damp when I put it on today. Anyway, it was still a little bit damp. Um, so I just kind of go for it. Okay. That's good to know. I mean, and like you said, you're not soaking the piece. You're not soaking the piece. Right. So he's not dripping with water down his face or anything, or I'm not sticking him in the sink. So it's okay to get in there and kind of dampen it. Like tomorrow when he, he wakes up, he'll probably want to wet it to comb it and everything. And that's okay too. We just don't want to drench it. And those are kind of the instructions that I give him. Right. And like, as you said, like at the beginning of the, of the program, Brandy, you know, when someone like, you know, David comes in or any of your clients that come in, obviously the hair comes in a certain length. You do, you do tend to give it like a pre-trim because you know them, they're clients of yours, you know already what length they're going to be to approximately. So you do kind of take some of that, that work for yourself out is like pre-game, <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah, so normally what I would have done is I probably would have trimmed this top down. I would have taken a lot of this weight out of this top because I know he doesn't wear it this long. Right. Um, so I would have taken some of that off, but for today's purposes, because I kind of wanted everyone to see. Yeah, and you know what happens. Like the minute that you, you take it down to like the length you think it's going to be, they come in and they're like, I think I want to wear it a little longer. <laughs> You're like, yeah. oh. Okay. I have a guy that I always, before I pre-cut, I always call him if I have time to pre-cut and just be like, are you wanting to change your style today? Are you wanting to go look? Because he wants to change his style all the time. And I made that mistake. He's like, I think I want to go a little bit longer today. And I'm like, I think you don't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> next time. Let's try that next time. Yeah. You, would, you know what? That would be me. I would be your worst nightmare, Brandy, because I would come in. I'm like, we're going to do this this time. And every day you'd be like, come on, man. Like, no. Yeah, <laughs> no, this is not Burger King. You can't have it your way. <laughs> right. At least call before, before any changes. <laughs> um, so Donna, um, Donna Snyder writes in, hey, Donna, thank you for watching today. And she said that she had a one-on-one -on -one class and she loved it. So thank, thank you. you. <laughs> It's awesome. It is awesome. It's it's really great too. Like you know, I because the classes we do offer classes all over the country when we were traveling, but especially in Kansas City, you know, um, or where I'm based out of, uh, it was always great to like come into a classroom and just to see like everybody coming in with their like mannequins for the first day, and everyone like where do we begin? And then just seeing how their confidence level at the end of the class. Um, just incredible. And just, just, you know, when you, you know, when you learn something that is like, 
I mean, it changes your life. It's a game changer. To be able to do this is amazing. And, you know, for a lot of people who are interested, maybe your niche is, you know, you want to touch customers like one-on-one -on -one and you want to work with people personally. But I will tell you this, that, you know, if you are a type of person who is getting into wigs and hair replacement um, because you want to get into like film and theater, I mean, there, this is done all the time for film and for television to, you know, change an actor's look or to give an actor uh, a style um, to, for a particular character. And uh, this is not something that is new, but we are perfecting it like all the time. It's something that's constantly being perfected. So, you know, having this skill in your arsenal as a creative person, as a hairdresser, is an amazing tool and it opens you up to so much more possibility with what you can do and how you can use hair as an art form. So just sharing that with you all. <laughs> Thank you, Frank. You're, you're welcome. That was my public service announcement there. Um, okay, I love yeah. it when people are all for my art because this is, this is, everybody gets to wear my walking art. Yeah, it is. You know what I mean? It is, it is a skill and a talent and I think perhaps a lot of people shy away from it because they, they think of it as like out of their realm. And let's face it, when you, if you go to barber school, you go to cosmetology school, you know, we touch on this briefly, but you really, it's really something that is a continuing education. If you really want to learn it, the best way to do it is to get some education, to work with somebody like Brandy uh, or any of our other educators that we have and have them share their knowledge and their expertise with you. It is, and it's such a gift for, to be able to share that with people and, uh, and to, to give them some extra tools that really can change your life profoundly. Well, and you know, you have the ability to really change someone else's life. I am always reminded of it. I had a 10 year old girl in for a consultation the other day who has alopecia. And she's always rocked her little bald look and been happy. But here lately, kids are starting to give her a hard time. And she's getting to that awkward age. And she's decided that she wants a wig. Right. So I am so excited. And I'm so looking forward to, we ordered her a princessa. And we ordered her a bunch of the little colored clip-in pieces. And we are doing her console or her cut-in in a few weeks. And I know that that is going to completely change that little girl's life. Right, for sure it is, for sure. And it's amazing that we have the opportunity to get to do that. Yes, yes. And I said before, I'm like, it's always a thing because, you know, you wonder as, as a hairdresser, as a stylist, like for me, I've, I've sat with, with customers who were losing their hair or their hair was thinning. And it's just, it's devastating. It's devastating for anyone who has to go through it for whatever reason they're going through it. And I think the reason why is because we, it's something where we grow up with it. We're a child, we have our hair. And it's like an extension of ourselves. And so uh, losing that is a very, it's a very traumatic thing for a lot of people. And being able to restore that look and restore that feeling of, you know, it's also style, right? I mean, we feel stylish mm -hmm. with our hair. It's our signature. It's kind of like uh, associated with who we are as a person and what we're trying to communicate about ourselves. And so it, this is really a wonderful thing because like you said, that little girl who's 10 years old, you're just restoring her confidence. You're making her get the most out of life because she's not worrying about something else now. You know, yeah. it's a wonderful thing. Um, you know, Brady, Stephen asks, uh, do you ever, like once you've done a, a cut in like this, once you've shaped the hair, do you ever go back afterwards and rinse it out or shampoo it to get like all the little cut hairs out of it? You know, I have a couple of guys that really insist upon me doing that and I have done it. Mm -hmm. um, or if I know that that's something they're going to want to do, I will tape it on. I will cut it in. And then once we're done cutting it in, I'll go rinse all of the little hairs out of it. And then we'll bond it back on. Okay. Because yeah, you do typically say, Hey, let this rest up a little bit. Let it set up a little bit before you're, you're too active with it. So yeah, yeah. that would make sense. I had a client offer to buy me a little mini dirt devil vacuum the other day to vacuum his hair out with. I thought, well, that's not a terrible idea. <laughs> Maybe you need one of those Flobies, Brandy. Then it just kind of vacuums and cuts at the same time. You know what? Don't laugh. Didn't you ever just want to try one for fun? I kind of did. I always did. I never, I never did manage to. I could commit to buying one, obviously. <laughs> uh, but, but it is very intriguing. I really, I kind of wanted to try one just to see. I know. Have they improved at all since those infomercials? <laughs> I have no idea. I, those were terrible, weren't they? They were so no. bad. 
they may as well put a bowl on that one little kid's head. I know, I know. Well, you don't have much control of it. That's for darn sure. <laughs> yeah. So right now, kind of what we're left with is I'm just going through and I'm taking out some of the roundness. So he's got a little bit of roundness going on here. So I'm going in and just kind of tapering in these sides yeah. just a little bit more. He likes to wear it kind of curly. I know the top's a little longer for him than what he normally likes it, but we're going to kind of play with it and tweak it a little bit more when we, as yeah. we go on, you know, we're kind of running out of time here, but. I know we're asking you to do like, you know, all of this in like record speed, Brandy, and you are amazing at it. And I know you probably, you may tweak him a little bit afterwards, just, you know, once we go off camera, but you know, it is difficult, you know, and so you guys, I mean, you have to imagine, right, how Brandy is doing this. Uh, it's her expertise. It's her, you know, her training. She's been doing this. This is what she does. So it may, don't think it's going to, you're going to be able to do this in this amount of time the first time. It's going to take you a little bit longer. Be patient understand that and uh that's that's part of the whole learning process you know you can kind of see his hairline down here i mean we're, we're starting to blend in really nicely there of course yeah. i will go in and i'll dry that under and finish tweaking the sides and the top and everything of it and so brandy how long has david been uh wearing uh, hair has it been a while like yeah, so I asked him earlier when he got here, and I had said 15 years when I talked to you guys, and he said over 12 years, so somewhere around there, quite a while. Okay. Oh, he looks too young to be wearing hair that long. I know, he's got like <laughs> a face of a 25-year-old. <laughs> he really does. I don't think he has one wrinkle on his face. I can see that. I'm envious. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> so we're just gonna just keep kind of whittling away at this and at this point i put a lot of texture into it mm -hmm. i always go through and do that texture and now we can kind of go back through and we can point cut and we can check all of our lengths and take just a little bit more out right were, were you we missed it at all brandy like is that something that you might so do yeah it's still pretty damp at the moment but if it gets much drier than where i have it right now i'm going to want to wet it just a little bit more yeah. yeah it's looking really nice and i see actually i didn't see you trim the perimeter of it all so it obviously this fits him very well it this fits him perfectly we don't have to trim anything off of it we could if we needed to but we really don't it i comes down right where it needs to go in the back Right. I mean, that's actually quite amazing because I was anticipating that you were going to have to trim some of it to uh, to make that work. So I'm that's really great. This was, it was like made for you, David. <laughs> it really kind of was. I was super excited that he got to try this for the first time. Yes, yes, yes. One of the perks. Denise wants to thank you personally, Brandy, for sharing your expertise with us today, as do I. Thank you Thank so much. You. I always appreciate the support. You guys are great. And a thank you to David too, because look, you guys, for someone to come on and, and, and kind of just like bear themselves to do something like this, I mean, that's, it's quite a big deal. And it's not something a lot of people like to do. So David, thank you for, for doing this. And thank you for just by doing this, knowing that you're, you're helping a lot of our people. And, and uh, I mean, you're, you're, one of those people that's contributing to the face of hair replacement. So thank you very much. At least in part. We can't say all of you, but at least in part. My, my pleasure. My pleasure. <laughs> but you know, there is a thing. There, there. I think there used to be a, like a big stigma about hair replacement because you know people weren't being trained properly, and the level of expertise uh, has just gotten better. I think people are you know really embracing this as a craft. And really see this as an art and it's exciting for me to see hairdressers kind of really take this to the next level and really expect a lot and want the best out of this uh because it just translates into just nice looking good looking hair for people and that's what it's really all about you know well and and our technology um hair you wear has changed the technology in this system entirely years ago when i started doing this they were the big, thick, heavy systems. They were super heavy on the bottom, and we had to put a ton of hair in the system 
so that we could hide the base of the system. Yes, yes. You know, and then we came in and we made these really thin bases and these nice skin looks and we could put less hair in it. So we didn't have to start out with nearly as much hair. We don't have to hide the base anymore. Yes. We can kind of look down through the top of this and yeah. we can see that he has scalp and that's what we want to see. That's what keeps it looking natural is looking through, seeing the scalp, seeing the recession in through here. Not yeah, and I think there was a misnomer for a long time, Brady, about like, if you're gonna wear hair, you wanna replace all your hair and you want it thick and you don't wanna see any parts of the scalp. But the real ones that look believable and the ones that you would never clock are the ones where the density is lower. And you can actually, if the sun hits it, you can see down to the scalp and it doesn't look like the old idea of like this, they call it a rug or a carpet. It's not like that. And, you know, and I, can, I can show his hairline here. It looks nice. You can let yeah. people see that. We don't have to necessarily hide it. Exactly. And that's big. That is big. You know, um, I, I know a lot of people are going into lower density hair replacement systems because they're getting used to the look and they like a little bit the light shines through there and they like a little bit you can see the scalp. That is that is what makes it look supernatural. Um, and then again, you're not even looking at it because it's natural to see some scalp. It's when you don't see any scalp <laughs> that you kind of like, oh, hmm, that, that's interesting. <laughs> So I mean, that's why everyone thinks that you wear hair. We can't see your <laughs> I know. Let me tell you something, Brandy. If I was wearing hair, I would be wearing it a different texture. I would have a, I would have like a closet full because I'd want it straight. I'd want it tipped blonde. I'd want I would I'd change it all the time. So don't think I haven't thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, whenever you decide you want to wear some hair, you let me know. I'm gonna be the one to do it, Frank. <laughs> oh, you know, you know you'll be getting the call, girl. <laughs> so we're just going to cut a few little baby hairs around here for him and he really just likes to wear kind of that natural curl in the yeah. top brandy tell me about the baby hairs because this is something that i know you do and one of the things that i love that you do can you tell us a little bit when you say we're going to cut in some baby hairs what you mean by that so i have these little hairs right around here that kind of hang down most people do they're the little shorter finer hairs yeah. And what we do is we come in that front and we pull a little piece down and we twist it kind of like that. I'll mm -hmm. take my texturizers and I'll go in and just make a couple little snips. And what that's gonna do is just allow a little bit of texture around that hairline, just to soften it up just a little bit. Yeah. So it keeps it a little bit softer right there. Again, you guys, why I love Brandy, again, the attention to detail because you do, we realize, right, that hair doesn't all grow at the same length. Sometimes it's in different phases of hair growth. By creating that little bit of baby hair there, what Brandy is doing essentially is creating an even more natural look because we do have like little hairs that grow up mixed in with the longer hair. So, I mean, just amazing, amazing. But these are little tips. These are little tricks that, you know, working with a professional is going to give you and, and, and getting this kind of education um really will set you apart from other people in the industry and we all know look if you're, this is something you're doing you you want to hit, do it with confidence and you you want to give the best possible outcome to any person whatever their needs are that steps into your salon and whether you're doing whether you're a colorist whether you're a hair cutter whether you're an extensionist or whether you do hair replacement it's about being the best and delivering the best. And that is what's gonna make you successful. And that's what we aim to do so that you guys can be as successful as Brandy. <laughs> so we will kind of finish his tweak, but that is pretty much our general. Yeah. Cut there and you can see where we left him a little bit straighter, you know, right around here yeah. into his hairline. Maybe it was down a little bit. Yeah. Very cool. It blends in perfectly, Brandy. You can see that the curly wavy texture kind of going into it. It's still waved, but it's just, it's a little straighter and as it would be in nature, you know? Right. Very cool. So that is William. And now, so real quick, Brandy, now when we finish, I know we're going to go off camera because we've, you know, you guys, it's, it's like I said, this is a process that takes some tweaking. Will you apply like a styling gel? Do you do a mousse? What uh, What does David normally do on a regular basis to kind of style it and refresh the curl and all of that? Um, I think he normally uses like a little bit of a gel or a plumbing, right? 
Yeah, just a, just a little bit. Yeah, he doesn't use a lot of product or anything. He just kind of puts it through the ends. I yeah. like to always put stuff in and annoy people because I really like the oil. <laughs> um, so yes, I do use them and I'll put it in my fingers here. And yeah. we're just gonna go through and just lightly kind of run through the ends. Yeah. Just to keep that nice softness to it so that it doesn't start to look real frizzy or anything on us. Very good, very good. So you can use oils, waxes, pomades, all of those things. They're perfectly fine. Yes, um, yes. As long as they're professional products, you know, running out and buying some Tresemme is probably not the best idea in the world. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, you guys, ta-da! David oh, yeah. complete, his hair is on. So wonderful. And I want to tell you guys, we do, we do have a winner today. And that winner for asking questions today and randomly selected is Miss Marion Payne Spaulding. So thank you, Miss Marion, for joining us today. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Um, David, thank you for being with us. So great to have you. Uh, it's nice to see someone with some textured hair because we've done some straight ones before, uh, really smooth. And so now they have someone with some curl. Great, wonderful to have you. Brandy, what can I say to you? I missed you at the last photo shoot because you, we were doing it remotely and I was directing from another city while you were doing hair in another city. I can't wait to see you so we can work together again and I can watch you in person. And uh, thank you as always for sharing your talent. Uh, so generous of you and so kind. And uh, of course, continue to success you. You guys, that's Brandy. She's from Elements of Hair in Phoenix, Arizona. Not big kisses to you, Brandy. Thank you, Frank. <laughs> Always fun, even if it's this way. I'll take what I'm, I do. I'll, I'll take it too, girl. I'll take it too. Well, you guys, thank you for joining us today. Uh, it was wonderful to have you. I hope you all learned something. Again, this was the William hair piece in the perimeter bond, which we did today, the bonding method today. And again, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to our education team. And uh, if she's still on, I don't know, Gina and Jenna, thank you for the questions. And uh, Gina, Director of Sales and Business Development at American Airlines, thank you for joining us today in the beginning of the program as well. All right. I think we're done, kids. <laughs> thank you, Frank. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Hope to see Bye. you next time on our next Harry Work Cares.